the Lord, Apostolic Crusaders. We are excited to be with you tonight in service, and uh, we're trusting that you're ready to have a great time in the Holy Ghost. And uh, we want to invite you not just to spectate, but to worship with us. And so I'm going to invite you to stand wherever you're at, your living room, your bedroom, wherever you may be viewing with your friends, maybe, or even your youth group tonight. We want to uh, invite you to worship with us. So I'm going to ask you to stand, just lift your hands up. And uh, we're going to enter into a season of worship. Come on, somebody call upon the name of the Lord with us. God, we love you. We're thankful for what you're doing. We're thankful for the opportunity, Lord, to have worship together tonight all across the country with those that are viewing. Lord, have your way in this place tonight. We give you praise and glory.
I wish you'd just call his name out right where you're at right now. I think it'd be okay to call on the name of Jesus so loud right now that your neighbors hear it. I think it'd be all right right now for somebody just to lift him up in your own house. Right now, call upon his name. Leap for joy. Dance where you're standing. Lift up your voice and shout, our God reigns. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands everywhere as we continue worship right now. Thank you, Jesus.
Why don't you lift your hands and just praise him right here for just a moment. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift, lift up our voices unto a great God right now. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. God, we magnify and glorify. Hallelujah. We'll build our lives upon you, oh God. Nothing else will satisfy. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, we fall in love with you tonight all over again. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I wonder before the word comes forth tonight, one more time, if you just lift your hands, young people. Apostolic Crusaders, just throw your hands in the air and ask the Lord to speak to you. Come on, one of them. Somebody needs a word right now. Somebody needs to hear from the Lord right now. Come on, one more time. Just, just take a moment here and just help us exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, prepare my heart to receive what thus saith the word of the Lord tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory tonight, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Apostolic Crusaders. What an honor it is to join you tonight in service. Thank you for joining us. I want to say thank you to Brother Mundy and uh, the Pentecostals of Lubbock for leading us in worship. I want to say thank you to Pastor Bostic for allowing us to have this service here at the Pentecostals of Lubbock, a beautiful church. Thank you tonight for joining us. I'm going to Genesis chapter 38. As you turn there in your word, I want to say thank you to Josh Wilson all of our leadership of our apostolic crusaders thank you young people for being here tonight i have a word i want to share with you i won't take much of your time but i want you to plug in for the next few minutes and i believe god will speak to you right where you are genesis chapter 38 with one passage of scripture says this and judah acknowledged them and said she hath been more righteous than i the she here is tamar and Judah acknowledged them and said, She hath been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Sheila, my son, and knew her again no more. For just a few moments, I want to speak to you on this thought. When praise falls short, God bless you. When you mention the name Judah, uh, you think of praise. That's the first thing you probably think of. Judah means praise. Judah is a very popular character in the word of God and because his name means praise that excels his popularity every verse that we hear his name uh, is doubled when praise is mentioned uh, we are good at praising our worship services when we show up at church we're known for clapping our hands we're known for shouting we're known for raising our hands I've been in services before where we've danced and we've run the aisles and we've rolled on the floor people that are not used to this, uh, this kind of uh, makes them feel a little uneasy. As a matter of fact, it, uh, they made fun of us for a lot of years, but the simple fact is uh, they don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. My bishop growing up, R.B. Bingham, used to step to the pulpit and he would say, give the Lord a 47 psalm. What he was saying was Psalms 47, 1, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. He was encouraging the church to clap their hands and to shout. We have several scriptures throughout the word of God that back us on the way that we praise. Scriptures that say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Scriptures that say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Scriptures that say, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And it just so happens that we're no longer the outcast when it comes to praising. There are many denominations across America and the world. Every Sunday they gather gather their congregation, and they now are encouraging their people to clap their hands. They're now encouraging their people to raise their hands. They're now encouraging them to step out of their seat and dance a little bit and maybe run around a little bit. At one time, we were mocked and ridiculed for this, but now the world is falling in behind us because they know that there's power in praise. They know there's authority in praise. And I want to tell you that we're good at praising the Lord. And I'm thankful that we're good at praising the Lord. I'm thankful that I can gather at National Youth Convention with the Apostolic Crusaders. And we got young people that are not afraid to step out of their comfort zone and give God the praise that he's worthy of. However, though, I'm preaching to you tonight when praise 
falls short. I believe that there are a few things that praise can't do by itself. The text that I read to you tonight in Genesis chapter 38 is the end of a story. I want to go back to the beginning of that chapter and lay a little foundation for you this evening. Genesis 38 and verse 6 says that Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. If you continue to read this passage, you'll find that Onan was evil, and the Lord slew Onan. So here's where we are. Judah has three sons. He has Ur, he has Onan, and he has Shelah. And two of Praise's sons are killed by God Almighty for being evil. Ur, the Lord killed him. Onan, the Lord took him out. Now in that time, there was a covenant, there was a law, there was a rule that Judah had to give Tamar, Shelah, which was his third son, but Shelah was not yet of age. So Judah looks at Tamar and says, Tamar, I need you to go back home for a while. And when Shelah gets a little bit older, I'm going to send Shelah to take care of you. I'm going to send Shelah to fulfill the oath. I'm going to send Sheila to fulfill the responsibility that falls upon our shoulders. Thank you, Praise, for being such an outstanding guy. Thank you, Judah, for doing the right thing. Ur is out of the picture. Onan's out of the picture. And here we have Judah. We got good old praise saying, Tamar, don't you worry about a thing. Why don't you go back home? And when the time comes, I'm going to send Sheila to you. Something interesting about Tamar, when you look up the word Tamar, it means palm tree. Tamar. The palm tree. The palm tree is a representation or a symbol of righteousness. Psalms 92 and 12 says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. In 1 Kings chapter 6, we find that it was palm trees and cherubims and open flowers that were carved within and without the tabernacle upon the walls. Ezekiel 41 talks about there being a palm tree and an angel and a palm tree and an angel all along the walls of the tabernacle carved in gold. This was a representation of the righteousness of God. In John chapter 12 when Jesus come riding into Jerusalem and they waved palm branches for, before him. They were not only speaking about his victory to come, but they were speaking about his righteousness. The palm tree is a symbol of righteousness. It speaks to righteousness. Do you want to know what righteousness is? Righteousness is simply doing what is right. That's what righteousness is. It's doing the right thing at the right time. It's being right, not what you think is right, and not what I think is right, but what the Word of God thinks is right. You're not going to stand before Judgment Day and be measured by a book that I wrote or a book that you wrote. You will be judged by the Word of God. That's the measuring stick in your life. Righteousness is simply doing the right thing. Scripture says in Romans 6, 18, being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. You left the bondage of sin and you went into the bondage of righteousness. There's a responsibility that falls on your shoulders, young people, not just to show up to church and praise God, but to show up and do the right thing thing righteousness you become a slave to it a servant to it you become bound to righteousness that's why Matthew 6 33 we often stop short when we say blessed but seek ye first the kingdom of God the scripture says and 
his righteousness. Matthew 5, 10, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Proverbs 16 and 8, better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. I'm telling you, if there was ever a time where we needed young people to do the right thing, we're living in that time in 2020. I challenge some young people to make up in your mind, no matter what the world does, no matter what everybody else does, I'm picking up the word of God and I'm going to do the right thing. Judah did not understand the value of Tamar. Judah did not understand the value of righteousness because you see, Judah sent Tamar home to wait on Shelah. But scripture makes it very clear that Judah had zero intention of giving Shelah to Tamar. Judah was not about to give his third son to Tamar. Even though the covenant, the oath, the responsibility fell upon his shoulders. Even though that burden was his family's to carry. It fell upon Shelah. Even though praise looked Tamar right in the eyes. And said, hey, when he gets old enough, he's coming to you. The Bible says Judah had no intentions of sending Shelah to Tamar. Can you believe that? Judah, the one that can do no wrong. Judah, praise. Praise is standing here lying through his teeth. Praise is standing here knowing, willingly doing the wrong thing. Tamar goes home. Praise said he would come. She sits around and she begins to wait. She knew how old Sheila was. She knew the timeline there. She understood about when the plan of God should unfold. She understood all this, that time comes and it goes day in and day out. She goes to bed that night thinking maybe tomorrow he'll show up. We're into that season. Any day now he's going to show up. It's about that time. She goes, wakes up the next morning. There's no Sheila. There's no Judah. Time goes by. She begins to realize, wait a second here. Judah is not coming through on his responsibilities. Sheila has not been here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Praise is not cutting it all by itself. Praise is not getting me where I need to be. Praise is not fulfilling the ministry all by itself. Praise is not fulfilling this oath. So Tamar hatches a scheme. She knows the vicinity, the whereabouts of Judah. Scripture says she dresses up as a harlot, plays the part of a harlot, presents herself to Judah. Judah has no idea that this is Tamar standing before him. He goes in and he's intimate with Tamar. He has an intimate moment with Tamar and he goes along his way. Few months go by, Judah never knew who she was. He never understood. He never had a realization. A few months go by, word gets back to Judah that Tamar is with child. Judah's been waiting for this moment. He's been looking for an exit here. And here's his exit. He can bring Tamar before the congregation and say she's played the part of a harlot. He can get Sheila out of this oath. He's found a way out for Sheila. He's found a way out for his family. We no longer have to put up with Tamar. We no longer have to put up with that young lady that we gave our word to. We no longer have to carry that burden. He drags her before the congregation. It's a crazy story, young people. Go read it for yourself. And he begins to accuse her of being a harlot, not waiting for Sheila, his son, even though Judah never intended to give his son to her. He's putting all of the blame on her. Judah says, young men, listen to me. Tamar was supposed to wait for Sheila. Judah says she didn't wait. 
And because of this, death has to come to her. Because of this, she's not worthy of my boy anymore. Because of this, she is no longer worthy to have that oath fulfilled. Sheila is excused from carrying that burden. That responsibility is no longer on his shoulders. Do you see how praise is conniving his way out of this situation? When they go, turn to Tamar and they ask for an answer, when they turn to look at Tamar and say, what do you have to say about yourself? Scripture says she reaches in her pocket and pulls out a token, an object, and she says, the man that I was intimate with, this belongs to him. And I imagine the crowd goes silent. It was almost like a gasp in the room. Oh, talk about unexpected right now. <laughs> Judah standing there, good old Mr. Praise, that everybody knows, that everybody loves, that everybody trusts, that everybody's following. Because if we got praise in service, then everything's okay. Because if we shout, everything's all right. You see, we judge our services by how much praise goes up. We judge our care. We measure ourselves to Judah. Well, they danced across the aisle, so that means their heart's okay. Well, they took three laps tonight so there's no secret sin in their lives you see everything is measured by Judah and when she lifted out that object that token and said this is the man that I was intimate this belongs to him the crowd gasped they stood back can you believe it oh my gosh no one saw this coming no one could it was silent no one could say a word because Judah just realized for the first time it was me that was intimate with Tamar when I should have sent my son Sheila it was me that went into Tamar I was the one that fell short I was the one that was wrong that's why Judah looks at her and says she hath been more righteous than I she hath been more righteous than I church family and apostolic crusaders I'm telling you there's a value on righteousness that you better get a hold of James 5 16 says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man not a praiser not a dancer not a shouter but a righteous man the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much we prance around and proclaim the promise I've been young and now I'm old yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread Proverbs 14 4 through uh, 14 34 righteousness exalteth a nation are you living in a time right now where your nation needs to be exalted? You want to know what's going to do that? It ain't your shout. It ain't your dance. It ain't your run. It's a made up mind that I'm going to do what's right. That I'm going to fall in love with righteousness. You see, we have this misconception that praise will get us out if anything that we're in. You young men and young women, you can't go a day without looking at pornography. And you think 30 minutes dancing an altar, you're going to dance your way out of pornography? That's, that's dumb. You ain't dancing your way out of nothing. You think you're going to run your way? Wait, you think you're faster than the devil? You've lost your mind. Well, Paul and Silas praise their way out of prison. Everybody preaches they praise their way out of prison. They need to go back and read the book. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. They did what was right first. They allowed righteousness into the picture. And then they allowed praise. You see, when that intimate counter between Judah and Tamar, there were two children born from that encounter. One of the sons born, whose name was Pharez. Pharez means to breach or to break through. You see, the reason why you can shout your Holy Ghost all over the altar on Sunday night and Monday not feel change is because you did not allow Judah and Tamar to become intimate. You did not allow your praise to fall in love with righteousness. 
That's why breakthrough did not come. I've seen young people week after week and month after month. And I've thought to myself, how could they cry that many tears and not be changed? How could they run that many laps and not be affected? How in the world could they lay themselves down and roll across the floor and never leave different? You want to know why? Because they walked in in love with Judah and they don't give a flip about Tamar. I need some young people that are willing to allow Judah to become intimate with Tamar. I need some young people that are willing to allow praise and righteousness to come together. Job, all that Job went through, you would think Job would say, I ain't going to let go of my praise. That's not what he said. Job said, I hold fast to righteousness. He said, I have clothed myself with righteousness. You want to know why? Because praise doesn't have to produce righteousness. But righteousness will produce praise. Did you hear what I said? Righteousness will produce praise praise. If you make up your mind, young people, that you're tired of living the life that you've been living. If you make up your mind that you're fed up with being in bondage. That you're fed up with fighting this world. Why don't you walk into church and say, I don't care what happens tomorrow. I'm gonna do the right thing. And when you get that made up mind, and then you start dancing and start shouting with a made up mind, that's when breaks through will come to you scripture says the Lord was going to take out Sodom and Gomorrah a man by the name of Abraham began to intercede did he say if there be 50 dancers did he say if there be 50 praisers if there be 50 good singers God if there be 50 faithful Musicians, God. You know what he said, Lot God? If I can find 50 righteous, if I can find 50 people that are willing to do what's right, God said, I'll let Sodom and Gomorrah go. You want revival in your city? Stop thinking you got to have a better praise team. Stop thinking you got to have more talent and bigger programs. Stop thinking you need a bigger and better facility. All your city needs is one young person that says, I'm willing to fall in love with righteousness. I'm willing to do what's right. I'm willing to act right. I'm willing to talk right. I'm willing to look right. Praise gets way too much credit. I told you earlier, we judge our services by the amount of praise that goes up. We say things like, you want Jericho to come down? You need to shout a little bit. That's not true. Joshua goes to the people. And you know what he tells them? I want you to march for six days. And I want you to keep your mouth shut. For six days, I don't want you to praise at all. Those people had a choice that there that moment. We could either do what the man of God says... Well, we can go do what we want to do. For six days, they walked around Jericho and didn't open their mouth. For six days, they walked around Jericho thinking, what in the world is going on? But there was something inside of them, even though I don't have the answer. My man of God said it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow him as he follows Christ. I'm going to be obedient. You see, at that moment in time, they had loved righteousness. At that moment in time, they were in love with doing what was right. And after six days, Joshua said, okay, you've fallen in love with righteousness. Now let's awake Judah up a little bit. The next time we go, we're going to mix a little bit of shout in there. We're going to mix a little bit of dance in there. We're going to mix a little bit of praise in there. When righteousness and praise came together, there was a breakthrough that took place. I was, I don't know, remember exactly. I was probably 12, 13 years old. My church, my home church in Anderson, we went into a revival. I want to say it was probably eight or nine weeks. I don't remember exactly. We had church, a bunch of church. 
he does, the evangelist that week was our very own pastor. He got up and said, we're going to go into revival, Pastor Danny St. Clair. And we were all wondering who the evangelist was, and he said, I'm going to preach it. He began to preach revival. One night, something happened that I, I've never forgotten. I never will, Lord willing. He looked down the aisle, and there's a man that had been coming a few times. He was sitting on the end aisle seat. He was on the right side of the church. Pastor St. Clair walked up to him right in the middle of preaching. And he looked at the man and said, do you have a cigarette? I didn't know where he was going with this. Nobody knew where he was going. That man looked at him and said, yeah. He said, can I have one? He said, okay. He reached in his pocket, pulled out that pack of cigarettes, gave it. Pastor Danny St. Clair walked back up to the pulpit and he stood that cigarette up right there. And he began to preach against the addiction to tobacco. He began to preach against smoking. That is absolutely crazy. He got that cigarette from a man three rows in front of him. That's absolutely nuts. You don't do that. That's not how you reach the world. You don't tell them that they're wrong with them sitting right in front of you. He began to preach against smoking and anything else he could think of. You want to know what happened that night? In the middle of the service or towards the end, that man stood up and brought his pack of cigarettes to the altar and threw them down. And he was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because somebody was willing to preach righteousness. Because somebody was willing to stand up and say, this is what is right. It was Noah the eighth person saved he and his family why was he saved in Genesis 7 the Bible says because God saw the righteousness of his family you want to know what kind of preacher Noah was Noah was a preacher of righteousness he wasn't a praise preacher he wasn't a holiness preacher he wasn't this and that he preached righteousness because if you fall in love with righteousness everything else will follow if you fall in love with doing what's right. Righteousness. Can you believe Judah almost fell out of the genealogy of Jesus Christ because praise by itself wasn't willing to do what's right. Judah almost stepped outside that genealogy. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judah and his brethren. And Judah begot, it doesn't say Ur, Judah's firstborn. It doesn't say Onan, his secondborn. It doesn't say Sheila, the one that he would not give to Tamar. The next son that is mentioned in the word of God is Judah begot fairies. Do you understand that short moment of time? Judah almost slid out of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. That moment of time. Thank God that praise found righteousness. Thank God that praise fell in love with righteousness. Thank God that praise was intimate with righteousness because of that union, because of that intimacy. A breakthrough came forth. What I'm telling you, apostolic crusaders, is you need to make up in your mind right now, sitting right where you are, listening to this preacher, I'm starting to do the right thing. I'm going to fall in love with righteousness. No matter what my friends do, no matter what my family do, no matter what the rest of the youth group does, I'm going to fall in love with righteousness. Would you shut your eyes for a moment? I'm fixing to come to a close. I'm asking the Spirit of the Lord to come over us right now. I'm asking God to move upon us right now. I believe there's some young people that are tired of fighting some stuff. And you showed up week after week saying, hey, I don't know why I can't get over this. I'm dancing with the rest of them. I'm singing with the rest of them. I'm shouting with the rest of them. I need some young people with some made up minds to say, I'm going to do the right thing. No matter what situation I'm in, I'm going to turn to the word of God. 
no matter what struggle I'm at right now, I'm going to pick up the word of God. If you'll pick up the word of God, you're going to find out that repentance is right and you need to do it. You're going to find out that being baptized in Jesus' name is right and you need to do it. You're going to find out that the baptism of the Holy Ghost by evidence of speaking in another tongue and many more signs is right and you need to do it. You're going to find out the miracle signs and wonders. That's right. You're going to find out believing's right. Faith is right. Can I tell you that obedience is right? Young people, obedience is right. Did you hear what I said? You think you're going to dance your way around and get what you need while you're walking in disobedience to your man of God. Judah's going to come up short every time. Judah's not going to get you through that trial. Judah's not going to tear down that wall. What's going to tear down that wall is when you start walking in righteousness. And then you allow praise into the equation. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness after righteousness for they shall be filled there's a void in you right now that you're filling there's a void that you've shoved everything else in there and you can't fill it up you don't know why you can't fill it up you're searching you're seeking you're hungry for something you keep following after your friends and you keep doing what they're doing stop doing what they're doing look to your man of God Look to your first lady. Follow them with all of your heart. Fall in love with righteousness. And when you fall in love with righteousness, he said you shall be filled. Righteousness. I don't want a youth group that's good at praising. We've rode that too long. We've put all of our eggs in that basket week after week we show up to camp and if we can shout down the preacher the one that's going to preach the word of God if we don't have to hear the word of God that night we count it as a good service no I can't do Jude praise all by itself I can't live that way I need some righteousness in the equation when you put praise and righteousness together a breakthrough is going to take place Right where you are, I'm asking that you lift your hands. Right where you are, I'm asking that you open your heart and allow God to begin to speak to you. God's going to begin to talk to you. There's some convictions that are coming over some young people right now. Some things you've been wondering if they were wrong or not, they're wrong. Some other things you've been wondering if you need to start doing, you need to start doing them. There's some steps of faith that you need to start taking because it's righteous. There's some things you need to pick up because it's righteous. There's some things that you need to set down because it's righteous. When you start listening to the voice of righteousness and you walk into the house of God and begin to excel your voice in praise, there's a breakthrough that's going to be conceived there's a breakthrough that's going to be produced what you're looking for tonight is righteousness I need you to fall in love with it God we love you God we thank you God I pray this word would settle in our hearts and our spirits God I pray this anointing would come over us right now no matter what this world does or says God we're going to do what's right we're going to get into the word of God and we're going to follow we're going to chase hard after it God, I'm not chasing after this world. I'm not following after the things of this world. I'm chasing after you. I'm pursuing the things of the kingdom. God, I pray that righteousness would cover our youth groups right now. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as lions. I pray for a Holy Ghost boldness, not a pride, but a Holy Ghost boldness to come over young people that they're not ashamed to do what's right. I'm telling you right now, if you'll fall in love with righteousness, your righteousness could bring your mother and father back to church. Your righteousness could bring your brother or sister back to church your righteousness could bring that lost loved one it could turn your youth group upside down it could change your school righteousness lord we love you we thank you in jesus name god bless you apostolic crusaders